Yeah, 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 I know that there are other more awesome and interesting shmups for the Dreamcast, but Giga Wing was the one that I've played the most. Back then I wasn't aware of the quantity of shmups that were being released for the Dreamcast, mostly in Japan and the United States. I've always enjoyed playing this type of games at the arcades and never thought that many of those later titles would ever had a European release for home consoles. Giga Wing is an arcade original game by Takumi that was eventually ported for the Dreamcast and published in Europe in October of 2000 by Virgin Interactive. You know what happens in this frenetic genre, we choose a craft and shoot everything on sight through 7 stages. At the end of every stage there's a boss fight and if we plan to reach the 7th level we must preserve at least one of the three lives that are given to us at the beginning of the game. Just play it in easy mode and you're good to go. G Darius is based on the arcade game from 1997 developed by Taito and is one of my favorite shooters on the original PlayStation. It was as well the series' first venture into a 2.5D style graphics. The power-up system implemented is something quite nice, where we can steal weapons from the enemy ships, and each enemy ship gives us different style of power-ups. A very nice feature indeed. It is definitely one of the best scrolling shooters of the 32-bit generation. R-Type Delta is another PlayStation exclusive that is simply the best shooter on the system. It features a clever gameplay strategy with new tactics and amazing level design that just makes us strategically use the force pod that, as you all know, was always our best friend against the Baidu Empire since the very first R-Type from 1987. R-Type Delta was also the first game in the series rendered in full 3D graphics. New ships were also presented for the first time, each of which gives a different gameplay experience to the player and the well-timed soundtrack matches perfectly with the on-screen action making R-Type Delta an almost cinematic experience. Highly recommended! My favorite shooter on the system, Thunder Force 3 with one of the best and smooth parallax scrolling effect I've ever seen on a Mega Drive video game. Gorgeous backgrounds, amazing bosses, inspiring soundtrack that just compels us to keep moving, blessing our way to victory. So in 1990 Technosoft brought the side-scroller horizontal shooter that was so well made that an arcade port was developed and renamed to Thunder Force AC that was later ported to the Super Nintendo and renamed again to Thunder Spirits. Listen to this intro tune! Really awesome stuff! Gate of Thunder has to be one of the best shooters of all time! It's graphically gorgeous and with an amazing soundtrack, only available for PC Engine and Turbo Duo Super CD-ROM! It was developed by Essensoft and Red Entertainment that released it in 1992, being one of the titles bundled with the launch of the Turbo Duo in North America by October of that year. In this game we're a space cop trying to put an end to General Don Jinji's plans of acquiring a powerful energy source from an ally planet. But the music is really something to behold and received back in 1993 the award of best music for a CD game, presented by Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine. 
This setting is a treat for me. I simply love jungle based games and prehistoric isle in 1930 is really gorgeous. I can't quite understand why it never came home back in the day. Besides the beautiful and exotic graphics, it plays like a dream. We're flying over this island populated with prehistoric animals of all sorts, lizards, dinosaurs and pterodactyls, giant insects and even angry cavemen in a horizontal style of shooter that can drastically change its direction, diving into caves, waterfalls, cliff sides and it even has a small touch of our type with a turret that can be oriented around the plane that comes really handy during all those crazy changes of momentum. Now comes the time when you tell me that Prehistoric Isle in 1930 was also made available through the PlayStation Store for the PSP, Vita and PS3 back in 2012. Indeed it was, but again, I wish that it would have came out back in the end of the 80s when I was eager to play it. Nowadays, all my hype simply vanished and prefer to play it using my arcade cabinet with a good old arcade stick. Xenon 2 Mega Blast is another scrolling shooter that came about by putting together bits and pieces inspired from the best games available by that time at the arcade. Another masterpiece by the Bitmap Brothers, which also included the amazing 1988 hit song Mega Blast by Bomb the Bass as its main tune, that would made us plug the system into a knife fi simply to rock the place down. Needless to say that the Maverick one is the perfect weapon to beat this game. Another arcade exclusive and another cop game. This time around is Cosmic Cop by Irem, released in 1991 and also known as Armed Police Unit Gallop. You probably already knew that, right? But what you didn't know is that it's part of the R-Type series. Yeah, indeed. We control a space police fighter going against Bido's space vehicles, so expect similar gameplay in relation to other R-Type games. The weapon system implemented is in where it differs. At our disposal, there's a powerful laser beam and the scroll rate depends on the player's position. Quite unusual back then. Back in 2011 was included in the compilation Iron Arcade Hits and only available for PC and Mac. Since it was released, that I've been trying to get it for my collection because I truly love these compilations, but it has been quite a difficult task. Besides Cosmic Cup, there are other 17 Iron Masterpieces. The third chapter of the popular Star Force series arrived in 1992 and, whilst the original was ported to the Famicom and Sega Master System and the second entry named Super Star Force was a Famicom exclusive, Final Star Force remains also exclusive but for arcades. It didn't bring anything new or innovative to the vertical scrolling genre, but because of that, is a pretty solid shooter. It has beautiful and colorful graphics and a decent soundtrack and effects, but what really nails it is the friendly difficulty curve. It's quite a simple game that we pick up and play, excluding the over-the-top gameplay of many other similar titles, both in the options available and gameplay areas. If you have a sweet spot for the genre, go play it, it's really worth it. Agony wasn't just a pretty cover, it was and still is one of the greatest shooting ups of all time and a true work of art. Developed by Art and Magic and published also in 1992 by Psygnosis, Agony places us in control of an owl fighting its way through six gorgeous looking worlds packed with beasts and monsters. 
It's a really hard and demanding game, but the music and graphics compensates all the frustration. By the way, and as told on my Cygnosis retrospective, the piano intro by Tim Wright ended up being adapted without consent or credit by the Norwegian symphonic black metal band Dimu Borgir and featured in their Stormblast album from 1996. Later this same album was re-released without that track. Apedia 2 from German studio Kaiko, published by Playbite in 1992, a subdivision of Blue Byte, later acquired by Ubisoft back in 2001, and highly praised for their The Settlers and Anno series. Back to Apedia 2, the first thing that stands out after loading this game is the amazing soundtrack by Chris Ulsbeck, famous for providing music for the Turrican franchise. And the manga style really shows the studio's love and passion for the artistic vision of oriental Japanese culture regarding not only arcade and console video games, but also comics and TV animated series. We play as Ikuru that transforms himself into a deadly bee to try and rescue his wife that was poisoned by Aksai, an evil black magic lord. The gameplay mechanics were highly inspired by R-Type and Gradius, and there's a handful of levels, each composed of three or more stages, to blast our way through hordes of mutated enemies. The funny thing is that, after playing Apedia 2, gamers would start looking for Apedia 1, but the 2 on this game's title was just a joke from the developers. Air Gallet was introduced to players with this frenetic vertical shoot em up action, a style that by then continued to grab players at the arcades and still holds pretty damn well today. 1990s Raiden was its main inspiration, but Air Gallet can also be a classic on its own. It's beautifully designed with extremely detailed sprites and backgrounds that can even create an incredible sense of depth. It's also one of the most generous shoot'em ups in terms of power-ups, and the difficulty curve is practically the same from beginning to end. So if you're a fan of the genre, you'll love it, that's guaranteed, and just like it's said in Air Gallet's attract mode, it will blow your socks off. Yes, the R-Type series had also one arcade exclusive game, R-Type Leo, released by Irem in 1992. The first immediate impact is the colorful and bright visuals that really sets this game apart from its older and pale brothers. Besides that, it also introduced two-player action, a new impressive and highly useful weapon named Force Bits, and When We Die. We're not transported to the beginning of the level. Great news! And why wasn't R Type Leo converted to home systems? Beats me! I would love to play it on my Amiga back in the day. And with that two player mode, it would certainly be on the top list of best multiplayer games ever made. Hiram went completely wild trying different stuff within the R Type series, and I thoroughly applaud them. One of my favorite R-Type games to this day, that can only be surpassed by the original, mainly because of its iconic bosses that still haunt my dreams. 